Hey, welcome everybody to the International Entrepreneur Network in our first uh, Facebook Live with one of our members, Lauren Cohen. Yay, Lauren, thanks for being up this one. I'm the virgin. You are. <laughs> well, I started the International Entrepreneur Network, let's just call it IEN for short because it's a long thing. Anyways, I started IEN because I knew that entrepreneurs needed quick answers to decisions they were making on a regular basis and they needed somewhere to go to ask those with a non-partial opinion and and or various opinions so they could actually make a better informed decision. So that's the number one reason why I started it. But we're doing masterminds now and I wanna feature the members. So those of you that are watching, I wanna feature you. If you have something to share to the entrepreneurial audience here, um, we want to feature you. So I'm going to, I told you that if you're a founding member, you get more exposure, you'll get more chances and opportunities. So uh, tell your friends to join today if they go to iEntrepreneurNetwork.com. And, uh, but we want to get right into it today with Lauren and she has a website and a super cool, fun uh, assessment for you for leveling up, check, scaling up your business, making more money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but she also happens to be an attorney, which, and she knows a lot about a lot of different things, you guys. So, and I know that maybe you can't give specific legal advice to people. I get it because there's compliance and all that. But maybe you could give a little roundabout answers of if people have something. Yep. Right? Okay. Or you can contact her directly after she can tell you how to get more. Um, I'm just thinking that's a good course for law school. Right? Round about, so round about, round about, about compliance. compliance. That's <laughs> the single most important thing you can learn as a lawyer, actually. Well, people ask me questions all the time about, um, should I do a trademark? When should I be incorporated? And which should I do? Like an S Corp or a LLC or whatever. And should I do this partnership? And ah, no partnerships, you know, because they're usually bad. Um, but I want to let you introduce a little bit more about yourself and, and where you come from and what you're doing and all that. So take it away. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so my name is Lauren Cohen. I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, that other country. And um, I immigrated here and became a citizen in 2012. And um, for the past, wow, 12 years, I've been serving international companies, international entrepreneurs, helping them come into the country, get legal, helping U.S. businesses raise capital from mainly foreign investors, but also domestically. And I just saw this pervasive need among these business owners and entrepreneurs that were missing the foundation of their business. So they were spending a lot of money. No offense to you, Katrina. I love coaching. It's so important. Uh, spending a lot of money on coaching and sales and marketing and helping their business grow but there's you're going to reach a plateau if you don't cover your your bases and build your foundation it's kind of like you know any building like a home you're building your home and if it's on a very weak foundation or or a sinkhole it's going to eventually obviously collapse so you as you're building up and scaling up you want to expand your foundation and make sure that all of the foundational elements are in place and that's where i come in so i created a seven area seven element um, assessment and system to help entrepreneurs create their strong foundation so they can scale up successfully and um, access more money that's awesome and you know as you were talking I was like where is our live I was going over to the Facebook group and I'm like uh oh I actually did this on my personal profile Oh, well, oh. more exposure for you. And for those of you who aren't members of the IEN, you need to go join because this is the kind of stuff that you're going to get access to. So I, it was total accident, you guys. <laughs> I didn't it's mean to like, oh, right? So if you're in the group, I apologize. Uh, we'll move it into the group when we're done. But, um, but Lauren. Everyone having technological challenges. That makes right? Sense. That was no, this wasn't a technical or logical challenge. This was a brain fart. This was just <laughs> we all have those, don't we? I'm very close to my 49th birthday, and <laughs> so uh, you, me, I can't I'm even beyond that. So let's not go there. There is no perfection over here, just so you know. I know sometimes it looks like I have a perfect life or I do all these things perfectly. 
but oh my God, no. Let me just tell you straight. Well, so that's super cool what you just said. Yeah. Because those kind of F ups and those kind of oh crap, oh no, what am I going to do? You wake up in the morning, you're like, what's going to happen today? What, you know, it's those kind of things that caused me or promote, prompted me to build this because I don't want you to wake up every day and say, WTF is going to happen today. How am I going to save my business? Instead, you want to grow your business. And if you have the strong foundation in place, you're going to be able to grow. And so that's, that, that's a perfect segue into that. And you can't stop yourself from making mistakes. I mean, I mean, you can prevent a lot of them by getting advice and resources and coaching and stuff like that. But there's going to be mistakes and you just have to uh, accept them. And the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff book, I mean, I honestly, I never read it. But I can look at that title and say, oh, okay, I know exactly what that means. I don't need to read a book to know to not stress out about stuff, you know, that happens on an everyday basis. I mean, this morning with my husband getting out of the house, there was a little, there was, we had a, an outside conflict that seeped in, right? And so there was a little stress in the house and um, we were trying to troubleshoot it. And, uh, it, you know, I'm, I had to be the grounding source and I have to do that more often than not with, not only with, our family, but with clients and things like that. And um, you need someone in your life like that because <laughs> I just, I, yeah, anyways. So Lauren, what is the number one mistake you see when people are trying to scale up their businesses? What's the number one mistake? Not, so there's, there's so many, it's hard to identify the number. Okay, the top three. What are the top three mistakes people make when trying to scale up in their Not business? Having a corporate entity in place and trying to scale up with a sole proprietor, as a sole proprietor. Not having systems in place and trying to scale without systems. And not having, well, this is a hard one for the third. Not having insurance or the proper insurance in place. So you kind of want to scale and you're going to end up getting stuck and having a potential challenge and litigation because you haven't insured yourself or your business. And certainly if you, if, if you have, if you try to scale up with a sole proprietor as a sole proprietor, it's hugely problematic. And I apologize. I'm near an airport here. It's hugely problematic because you're exposing your business and your family. You're just talking about this morning about having um, the outside issues seep in to your family and getting your husband ready to go to, to go to work or wherever he was going. And the reality is that this happens in our business every day. And we want to keep the business separate from our home and our family, because otherwise you're subjecting your, your kids and your home and everything you own to any challenges you may have in the business. And no matter what kind of coverages you have, there's going to be challenges. The key is that if you have the, taken the right precautions, you're going to be able to not stop the challenges, but be able to respond to that. She's so loud. I'm so sorry to respond to the challenges in a very reasonable, productive and um, scalable way. Awesome. And so I got I got mistake. Number one was not having an entity in place, a corporate entity. I had mistake number two was not no systems. No systems. Okay, I got the insurance one. So mistake number. Every single day, people are like, "Well, how can I scale my business? I want everybody to answer the phone the same way." And I'm like, "Well, do you have a do you have a system in place for answering the phone? No. Well, how do you expect other people to copy the same way of answering the phone if you don't have a system in place? I don't know. Okay. Right? So I know. Kind of like building a funnel. You have to build a funnel and have the funnel capable of repeating and repeating. Lather, rinse, repeat. Lather, rinse, repeat. You want the same thing for everything from answering the phone to servicing your client to producing your product. Well, in a system, people always think, oh, I have to get software. No. A system is grabbing a piece of paper and making a checklist. And then if you want to, take a picture of it and stick it in your computer so you have uh, a, an SOP. If you want to get formal with SOPs, go get formal with SOPs and have someone help you write them. But a simple checklist of what you do and how you do it specifically can be your system. So stop making it too hard. People think they have to hire, they have to spend thousands of dollars creating their systems. It's like, no, just get it out of your head and onto paper so other people can do it. Right? Yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, especially like for those that are smaller businesses, you don't need to 
necessarily hire a systems and operations company. However, if you want to, let's say, build a franchise or a multi-unit business or anything like that, or license your product and really create something that is duplicatable and multiplicatable, it, we, we need to take those checklists and turn them into something that is systematized so that it can be rinsed and repeated over and over. And, um, but the first step is always writing it down. And this goes as well for, you know, I talk a lot about joint ventures and collaborative opportunities. And thank you, hi, Gina, um, collaborative opportunities. And look, we're doing collaborative opportunities. We're working on some together. The important thing is, and this is something that all of us are guilty of, when you enter into any kind of relationship, even marriage, you should have things documented, okay? Yeah. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a no-no. People are like, oh, I don't need a prenup, but look, it happens no matter what type of relationship a business relationship a personal relationship a email relationship document 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 so in my i have a slide where i talk i, I discuss the to scale up success and the one of them is how how and when is a is collaboration appropriate and at the bottom of it i'm like no matter what type of collaboration joint venture strategic partnership affiliate relationship just a partnership anything document it Even, yeah like katrina says yeah contract can be as simple as a piece of paper that you're both signed a handshake yeah. is not good enough you've got to get something on paper and these days with email just go back and forth with email and you've got something covered what about recordings like if you record on a conference line or something and you have a recording is it the same as a, a signed uh, it's the same as paper and th this is it, it's uh it's you know, because recordings, it's challenging. There's, they, they can be admissible, but they carry a different level of weight. And I am <laughs> no, not an expert in admissibility because I don't litigate, but for just document everything. Because right. Remember, it also gets yeah. confusing because when you're back and forth, you know, I'm not an audible learner, an audi auditory learner. I ever listened to audible. <laughs> it's funny. So I'm not an auditory learner. So when I go back and forth with somebody on the phone, if I don't write it down or put it in my phone or, or something, I'm going to remember maybe 50% of it. Yeah. But if you want to remember more than 50% and that's on a good day, because I'm older than you, we won't yeah. talk about that. If you want to remember more than 50%, I got to write it down. So the funny thing is like when I'm at spin class, I'll always come up with these great ideas. I'm like, what am I going to do? So today I actually left. I went outside of the room because I had this brilliant idea and I was like, there's no way I'm going to remember this. There's no way I'm going to remember this. So I'm sure eventually they'll have a way to get the thoughts right from your head into the phone, but you know, we don't necessarily want that. My ideas come in the shower <laughs> and my three or five minute shower, I get flooded yeah. and I keep waiting to find, and I know there's such a thing of putting some kind of pad of paper, the, not a pad of paper, but some kind of writing utensil inside the shower. So that's the perfect gift for me because I don't know. I um, a question from we do. We have some questions. So let's. So Gina was asking. Um, now that I also sell my paintings as well as working my coaching business, do they need to be separate businesses yes. from tax expenses, profit, and accounting wise? Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys something that's really important. The advice you're going to get from an accountant and the advice you're going to get from a lawyer are different because accountants look at stuff from a tax perspective purely, okay? They're not looking at it from a liability perspective. And that's okay. a really good thing. I did, a, I did a Facebook Live session with an accountant a couple of weeks ago talking about the new tax code. And I'm not an expert on the tax code, and I don't need to be because I'm not guiding about taxes. I'm not a tax lawyer, okay? But for, for your purposes, Gina, your businesses should totally be separate because otherwise the liability from one can just like happened with you this morning, Katrina, can kind of blend into your other one. So let's say one of your coaching clients is upset um, and it then they file some kind of you know claim or dispute or whatever, God forbid, okay? That can then impact your your art sale business because you're you're not separating them. So it's just like keeping your your home, your personal life and your business separate keep everything separate, you know, and if you are delivering different services, my service, I have three companies, 
they're very similar in terms of what they're providing, but they're separate because they're delivering to different client base. So very important to keep them separate. I know it costs more money, especially in California, but it's so worth it. I had a client last year. This is actually one of the reasons I started my business. So he has a dance studio for many, many, many years. She's operating it as a sole proprietor and she's trying to scale and she's creating a licensing program. And I'm like, you're doing what? And I literally could not sleep that night. I just, and, and for many years she's been successful, but you, you're going to be successful to a certain point as well. And then what happens, you go on the radar screen, right? And when you go on the radar, stuff happens, good and bad. And you want to make sure that the bad stuff is either averted or that you can respond to it effectively. And that's where, why it's so important. Keep your entity separate. And, and I will offer to all of you that um, I'm available for consult with any of you and all of you. And I'll just share my quiz with you at the end. And we can talk about your specific, you know, um, your specific situation. And I, I won't charge you for that. I'm not one of those lawyers. I have purple hair. I call myself the creative lawyer because I am. And I really try to go out of my way because I, I need to sleep at night. And, and I want you to sleep at night too. Well, you know, as I had a little idea for you, maybe you need your own membership program. <laughs> I do. And that is definitely something that we'll be working on. It's funny. Yeah. How much, I mean, seriously, you guys comment in the comments below. Like if you would pay, I don't know, 20 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month to be able to ask more on anything, anytime, anywhere. I mean, cause we've got questions in here. It would be really nice. I mean, even a hundred bucks a month is, is going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars, but Something stupid easy could be good for you. Just um, so, okay, Gina. Yes, absolutely. So yes, that answered your question. Um, and I didn't think it would be a separate business. That I was. That's what I was thinking. But it. But paintings are totally separate than coaching, unless you're giving the paintings to all your clients, or it's somehow intertwined. Yeah. Right. Oh, by the way, I'll add something else. Okay. So one of my big things, and I'm doing a webinar on this on April 2nd, is as one of the other seven secrets to scale up success is setting up a nonprofit. Um, I think that setting up a nonprofit is, well, I know that setting up a nonprofit is a great way to increase the value of your business and make more money. So perhaps, Gina, we might consider a nonprofit as one of the options for your mm -hmm. other entity. A nonprofit does not mean that you don't make money. Right. I hate that word, nonprofit. It, it just implies that they're not going to make a profit when, it's you know. A misnomer, certainly. Yeah. It, it, the, the concept is that the profits don't go in your pocket. There are no pure yeah. in a not-for-profit entity. Well, let's get to some other questions really quick because we wanted to keep this somewhat short today. Let's see. So, um Let's see. Uh, Renee asks, what are some other options for scaling your business that are not franchising? Oh, so many. Um, I bet you could, Katrina could address a bunch of these. Mm -hmm. so you can have certification. You can have licensing programs. You can, um, there are lots of options outside of franchising that mm -hmm. are much less expensive. The, it's kind of like the difference between franchising and licensing is similar to the difference between an employee and an independent contractor, except in, in California. So I'm not touching that. Okay. Cause I know there's all these rules and I haven't even looked at them. Yeah. It's all about control. And a franchise is really, if you want to really control everything that your, that your franchisee is doing and, and uh, every step of the way, but there's also a biz op business opportunity. I'm actually um, doing a client of mine is buying into a business opportunity here in Florida business opportunity is kind of a much less, much less onerous, are you kidding me? much less onerous obligation than a franchise. It's a great way to also scale your business by selling units of your business. So there's, there's, um, sorry, there's, um, uh, business opportunity, licensing, certification, talk to me. We can discuss all of these. I also have a quiz. It's called the franchise quiz.com kind of simple, thefranchisequiz.com. Take that quiz and we'll see if there's other options that might work for you. I love that. And thefranchisequiz.com. So we'll put these links in the in the chat in a minute. 
I just put hers up on the screen real quick, her one thing. And uh, so the other question uh, Raul has is, I need a new keynote speaker contract agreement. There's got to be templates for that online or... I'm gonna breathe through this. Breathe. I'm not, I'm not <coughs> in the yoga studio on the fifth floor here, so I'm, I'm breathing through. Okay. So, Katrina, you and I, our first thing we're gonna work on is getting you an amazing kick ass coaching agreement because I have created a coaching Kickstarter for there, I'll, you know, a speaking Kickstarter could be next. Easy, no, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no problem because the reality is. I have seen so many coaches that use some downloaded template, which is another one of my seven secrets to scale up success. Do not use random internet resources. So probably we should do a longer session when I actually go through my seven secrets and do a training. You know, we can do a full webinar. But the reality is that if you download something off the internet, you have no idea what you're really downloading. And there could be something in there that could obligate you. I cannot believe what is going on here. That could obligate you okay. to huge potential liability. And it is such a huge risk that you're taking. So please don't do that. If you have a, a keynote speaker engagement agreement, let's go through it. Um, I specialize in helping to customize and upgrade your agreement. It'd be my pleasure to help you with that. Sorry, now there's a bug. It's like a crazy day here. So yeah, that's okay. uh, don't download it, please. Don't download it. I got it. And it was the franchisequiz.com, right? Because I put that in the chat. Okay, good. And, and then, then the other quiz, the my my standard quiz is show me the money quiz. Show me the money quiz.com. Show me the money quiz.com. Okay, good. And so Raul, yeah, you just see, I agree. I mean, I have, now I have prepaid legal. Some people are going to say, or whatever, um, it's not the end all be all, right? We need, that's why I say get, I would rather, I would much rather pay on a monthly basis, someone like you that I can actually talk to or, you know, rather than this huge entity or whatever. So um, just saying. I'll, I'll tell you. Part of the reason I came up with this was because of prepaid legal and legal zoom and all this and their prepaid legal is great for a small, for the small piece of delivers. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to refer somebody there if they need a will, but if you need some customized attention to, for example, a, a keynote speaker engagement agreement, you don't want to rely on them because they don't have the knowledge or expertise and they don't, they're just going to farm you out to somebody that really doesn't care and have your back. And that's what I'm about. And this is, you know, my, my whole model was eventually, and Katrina, we can discuss this was my plan was to build a membership and it was going to be a hundred bucks a month, just like you said, or, you know, a 97 or 197. And we're going in that direction, but it's challenging because as a lawyer, you have to be so careful, Yeah. you know? And so, I would imagine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm my pleasure. And I'm, I'm happy to help any of you um, that have these questions. And Katrina, are, is this chat available for me to, to contact them? Yeah. All you have to do is go back to my personal profile, which is where this ended up. <laughs> well, I mean, try one of the quizzes. Um, that'll be a good way to connect with me. And then you get a little, you'll get the, the score on your quiz and you'll get a link to my calendar and we can set up some time or you can connect with me directly um, on, on Facebook or through Katrina. I'm, I'm here really truly to make a difference and help, but um, are there any other questions? I don't think see any. Wow. Okay. I know. I'm always amazed, right? Because I'm like, oh, there's a lawyer here and she's answering questions for free. Right. So let me think uh, some of the questions. So you talked about a coaching agreement. <clears throat> so a lot of times people will just uh, have people sign up on their website and shopping cart. So what if they click and buy from the shopping cart and there's verbiage in the shopping cart page that says you are agreeing to blah, 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 blah. And as long, if they press their credit card in, and hit submit. Are they agreeing to that? Do they have no, to check the box? I have a separate box. Do you want a separate box there? Okay, so you don't just want the blurb on your shopping cart page. You want a box that they have to check before they can check out. 
It's especially if it's a higher price. Huh? I'll throw something else out there. I, I don't know if there's any web people, web designers on here. There might be. But there's a huge area, a kind of untapped, which is about to be tapped into big time. And it's starting to be a focal point. The Americans with Disabilities Act, um, website compliance with the ADA is a very big deal. And it's becoming a bigger deal. And they're going after right now law firms and bigger companies. But they're going to start going after smaller companies. And especially if you are a um, web designer and you're designing websites for third parties, you could potentially be on the hook if you're not having, if you're not ensuring the website is ADA compliant. So in your agreement, we need to get some kind of indemnification to cover that. It doesn't mean that you're that you're 100% um, protected, but it shows that you at least realize <clears throat> that you've said to them, hey, you're, you may need to consider ADA compliance, and then it becomes their problem more than your problem, or at least it's not really your problem. You know, before before we get shut down, because Be Live is only goes so far, and we might just get totally cut off. So all your links are there. I wanted to make sure if there's any parting words you had, and then we'll keep answering questions. And I have one more for you too. My parting words are: just be in touch with me or somebody you trust. Um, yeah. I really, you know, I'm here to manage all of these different moving parts. Dealing with lawyers and accountants and everything is overwhelming. But let's get you covered so that you can scale up your business successfully and grow exponentially and work with Katrina and all of that fun, exciting stuff. I my my saying I use is I turn broccoli into ice cream because we can't sustain ourselves without the broccoli, but we always want the ice cream. And I, I'll share a little slide with you guys on the live. It show it has an ice cream cone, and coming out of the ice cream cone is pieces of broccoli. It's super cute. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Well, and you're in you're in the Florida, right? Yeah, I am in Florida. Okay, and so you it doesn't matter though because she's virtual. You can find her on Facebook, and uh, <clears throat> and we met at an event. A team of ambassadors like Katrina that bring clients to me and that provide services to clients. So if you're in Wichita, Kansas. I'll get you covered. Don't worry yeah. about it. You know, it's, it's, and by the way, I'm originally from Canada and I work globally as well. So yeah. I've been doing that for a lot of years. So we have another question from Jill who just came on. Thanks, Jill. If I hire someone virtually in another city or state and they complete only a portion of the work, so I pay them for that portion, though they want paid in full, therefore they threaten to take me to small claims court. Do I need to go to them or do they need to come to me? Do you have an agreement? Yeah. No? I don't know. Does she? So you're asking Jill, do you have an agreement, like in writing, right? An agreement, right. Right. So that that question was something I was going to ask. There's a huge new thing now with the independent contractors versus yeah. employees, right? Oh, and so California. I'm not going there. Right. <laughs> okay. That's only in California? I'm not going there. Oh, yeah. It's, okay. It's the the biggest in California and I have zero clue. I don't deal with employment law. I have okay. an amazing colleague out there who deals with this and I'm like, here, so here, here you go. So It's a lot. I have a client who's a professional organizer and she hires other organizers to do, yeah. to do big jobs with her. And the law says now, supposedly in California, that if you hire anybody who is equivalent to what you do, then you need to hire them as an employee instead of an independent contractor. That's what we've heard. That's what it seems to be. And I'm sure every instance is different, but my client has chosen to go the uh, employee route with it because she doesn't want to you know, get in trouble. Yeah, I had a, a colleague of mine in California um, yesterday wrote on Facebook that she's been running her business for 12 years and never had an employee and she just transitioned two people to employment employees. Now, yeah. California is a trendsetter. Okay. I'm going to acknowledge this. I live in Florida. Yeah. Not a trendsetter. No. <laughs> Cannabis, you got, you know, anyway, so there's no question that what's happening there with the, with the distinction is going to impact the rest of the world. Uh, not the rest of the world, the rest of the country. Yeah. Even in the oil states like Florida. So, but to be honest with you, I, I, I really try to stay away from that with a 10 foot pole. That's what employment lawyers are, are good at. And, and that's why I bring, so the key here is that I, 
my role is to be your trusted advisor and cover your back and bring in the people that are going to get the shit done that you need done because i'm not doing everything myself and you don't want me to well and not- managing them through the process i'm not just saying here go to joe smith have a nice day bye bye i'm your ongoing like a coo on the go so to speak yeah and honestly all attorneys are not created equal you can't ask every attorney this all questions legal right you can know you got your specialty just like most coaches or uh different virtual assistants we're not all created equal we all have our specialties and stuff so Let's see. Um, So Jill has a follow up. It's an independent contractor and there was no agreement in regards to legal stuff. Well, I do not know the answer to that. I am not a litigator. Um, You are in California, Jill. Yes, she is. Okay. So um, what I would suggest is if you'd like, um, you know, the virtual, the virtual assistant, they didn't have a contract that they had you sign either. Was it a virtual assistant? It was a. Do, to be honest, she's going to. She hired her. someone virtually in another city, so it could have been a virtual assistant of some sort, or a web designer, or a graphic person. I know Jill runs a, a ma- magazine, so. I do not know the answer because I don't know without an agreement what how the choice of law governs. That's uh-huh. where. We- bring in a litigator or, or somebody who specializes in that. I would say without an agreement, you want to get an attorney to write a letter and at least try to get those funds back or get the money. We, we need to bring a litigator in to do this. Yeah. And sometimes I've found all it takes is a, letter. The, a quick letter from an attorney on your case to freak them out and they'll just pay you. That's 80% of the time that happens and then 20% of the time they go get their lawyer and they fight it but and then you can choose to let it go or not and sometimes you just have to let it go but um, I would say it's worth if it's a lot of money I would send a, a quick letter which is why it's good to have you know legal shield or whatever because you can get that letter written for free or someone to do it but um Okay, so Renee has one last question. There's some loopholes be- about the independent contractors uh, because hairdressers are still operating as independent contractors. Yeah, but you know what? They pay rent. So either they pay a percentage to the owner of the spot or they pay rent for their place. So it's basically their, their place of business is that little cubicle, um, I believe, right? Again, I am not... I'm pretty sure because I know my hairdresser used to run a salon and spa and then she used to have people that rented space and now she rents space somewhere as a separate person. But, um, and, uh, let's see. Yeah. Unfortunately, this whole independent contractor versus employee thing is a, it's, it's crazy over here. We're in big conversation around it in California. <laughs> I know. I see it all the time on Facebook. Yeah. Because I, a lot, you know, I have a lot of clients and colleagues in California. So let's get back to the scale up conversation. So scaling up, what does that mean? That doesn't mean you have to work harder. It doesn't mean you have to work longer hours. Or it doesn't mean you have to have an exit strategy necessarily to sell your business. It just means you want to think about how to do things differently and how to evolve your business as you grow and as you live your life in my mind um, as well as creating more revenue of course and more profit not just revenue but profit Um, those are things that I think of in regards to scaling up making things easier more leverage more delegated more systems that's what I think of scaling up what other thoughts do you have in regards to it so people don't think well I don't need to scale up because I'll hear that because they they think, oh, it's going to be harder or they have to work longer in order to scale up. Yeah, so the whole key here is that we are trying to create the systems for you so that you can scale up and not add to your workload while doing so. Because your goal is to scale up. Oh, Judy, how are you, stranger? Your goal is to scale up by putting a foundation in place so that you don't have more stress as you scale. Okay. And I will, I'm not going to contradict you, Katrina. You can. I think think an exit strategy is one of the most important things to have from the get go, because if you don't, it's like, uh, basically I'm GPS for your business. 
And if you don't know where you want to go eventually, you really can't chart a path to get there. So my, my, I think that having the, having the end in mind from an earliest, from an early stage is super important. Do you want to sell your business? Do you want to give it to your kids? Do you want to leave a legacy? Do you want to retire? What do you want to do? Let's talk about that. So that's one of the things that we address in my success plan. So I have this success plan, which is my key deliverable. And the success plan addresses these seven areas, business planning, legal and compliance, insurance, uh, systems, branding, uh, branding and marketing, vision, mission, vision, exit, and the seventh one for some reason, oh, insurance. Okay, insurance and licensing. And those seven areas I feel are important. Now, not everybody's gonna agree, but those are the seven key foundational areas that are gonna give you that strong base from which to expand and grow. Um, and, and in that process, we do look at mission, vision, exit, because to me, they're all intertwined because ultimately we would like to have an exit for our business. So I, I like to discuss that with clients at an early stage and it's part of your business plan process as well. And I've been writing business plans for a really long time. There's Judy saying, start with the end in mind. See, that's why I love Judy. <laughs> She's actually one of my ambassadors. So um, I've known Judy for a good few years. So nice to see you, sweetie. So I, yes, I agree with a lot of businesses will need an exit. And I guess I didn't mean that you shouldn't need one, but I just, a lot of times people think they're their own business. And if they, something happens to them, then it just, it's going to stop. We right? want to change that, right? Because we want to give them systems so that they can have multiple revenue streams. And all well, of course. And I was just talking to my husband the other day and I said, honey, I need to connect you with my virtual assistant because if something does happen to me, you guys need to communicate because she knows the systems and she knows what to do and you will have no clue and you'll be grieving or whatever. You'll be taking care of me. So you need to tell her like what to do or to implement the plan. Right. So yeah, that would be. Listen, we have insurance for ourselves, but we don't have insurance for our businesses, right? Yeah. It's like when you're, you plan for your partner to know all your passwords and stuff. So God forbid something happens, you know, you have disability insurance maybe mm -hmm. for yourself, but what about your business? Your right. business is you for us entrepreneurs. And we have to look at it seriously and take it seriously. And especially as coaches, we can't expect people to take us seriously as coaches if it's like it's like the shoemaker with no shoes we've got to practice what we preach so i agree like it, it's hard because these are not things you want to think about but like i said it's about a gps it's about a plan it's about a map and we create this road map for you that people like katrina will help you implement and we build an implementation strategy that is based on your specific budget and your goals so that we can implement and achieve your goals together collaboratively not just me saying go to joe schmo or katrina you know referring you over to me we're going to work collaboratively to help you achieve your goals yeah that's so true so in uh wrapping up here um gosh we could go on for days because there's so many little issues um but i love the contract thing so get everything in writing uh, recordings are not as good as in writing. And so that's something even for me to, to note because I record everything, which is great, but I, you need to follow it up with some writing, um, perhaps if you're going to, and I'm going to throw something else out there. Mm -hmm. Most people on this call, even if you have an entity, I bet you don't have a corporate record book. And not having a corporate record book could be a huge problem. And it's really simple fix. And you can go back multiple years and fix it. And we can do it. We can do it all virtually now. And I laugh because people. I'm not admitting anything here. But gosh, I know people that don't have that done. And so if you have a clicky service that can make that happen, we need to know about it. Yeah, we're, I'm building that out as well right now. But if you want to talk to me about it, it's we I mean, I can do it. I just don't have it as a product line yet, but it will be. And I can do all of your minutes and get you caught up and make sure everything's kosher. Because if you don't have it done and something does happen or you want to sell or you want to bring in a partner, you're going to be stuck. So. Yes. And, you know, actually, I wanted to wrap it up, but I have a quick question. Um, while we have you here, uh, trademarks, people ask me all the time, 
they come up with a cool title for their program or their website or a catchy phrase or a quote that they use all the time or even a book title and they think they need to trademark it. And I know I paid like $1,500 for my Jumpstart Your Marketing trademark. And I don't want to do that for every little teeny tiny saying that I have all over the place. But what is your advice? I, I missed about half of that. All I heard was $1,500. <laughs> for my trademark. I don't want to spend $1,500 for each and everything I think I should trademark. And when is it appropriate to trademark? I don't tell people to trademark anything until they actually get into it and use it for a little while. You can't trademark it until you're using it. You're okay. not going to be denied. So don't bother. Start using it. Don't put TM and let's get it filed. And um, yeah, I'll manage that whole process for you. But get so it filed. TM. So you can use a phrase, but don't put TM on it. If you haven't filed yet, don't put it. Okay. That's, that's, you, yeah, you don't have any authorization or anything. And I also see that going and searching on the USPTO.gov site, it's very complicated to find out if there truly is a trademark on a phrase yeah. or a logo or, or yeah. a title yeah. or something. My, my trademark experts, both of them, do trademark searches, specific trademark searches that yeah. are equal beyond what I'm doing. So, and it's important because you don't want to start the process unless you're sure that there's a, there's, there's a path. Right. You definitely, I think it's important to get it, do a trademark search first, but hire someone to do that. Don't try to figure it out because I think there's mistakes that will definitely, and things to overlook because I've tried myself and I'm pretty techie and, and, and I don't know. I don't think it takes, it's not easy. It's not easy. So, and they gotta be able to look at all the little nitty gritty things and all the different varieties of things. And so if you think you're gonna trademark a phrase like love my life, I mean, think again because, right? <laughs> all right. I to go, so I need to yes. sign off because I have to go into car line for my kid. So okay. I'm gonna wish you a And I look at any calls, any questions, just drop them in and I'll, I'll follow Katrina's uh, um, Awesome. And connect with all of you, okay? And bonus to all of you, because I don't think only a couple of you who are on today are actually members of the IEN. So the rest of you should join for $7 a month at iEntrepreneurNetwork.com. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much.